You're ready rocket with the nonsense and my hopes poke it projects You won't stop till you bop to the top with all the hoppets Hip with the metagame train, the reigning top kid's at the top of his game And you can't hit my top kids You want the best tricks, I suggest you profit You want a mess, Brett, I suggest you drop it Once we start rolling, you know you can't stop it Let's go and get some lessons from Jay Wits and Profit, yeah! Hey everybody, I'm Jay Wits, and welcome to today's episode of... Profit? Okay, I guess I got some splaining to do. So for those of you guys who are new to my channel, this channel used to be strictly one for the Pokemon trading card game. I used to play the game all the time, I used to compete at a very high level, I went to Worlds and did very well one year, but recently I played the game a lot less and a lot more casually for fun with friends. The game is very expensive and it takes a lot of my time, so I haven't been able to ever really come back and play the way that I used to, but I'm still a really big enthusiast of the game, and I'd love to share new news of the card game with people who are interested. So, for now, I'm reviving Profit as a way for me to at least talk about set reviews, and maybe tournaments every now and again. Now, I can't say that I'm going to do this all the time, but still love the card game, and while I'm interested and new things are happening, I figured I'd talk about them from time to time. So, for those of you guys who don't know, the new Plasma Storm set is coming out soon, and I figured I'd do a set review of it. Let's check it out. Alright, let's get to it. Plasma Storm. Overall, I'd say it's one of the stronger sets we've seen in a while, but there's still a few bumps and bruises along the way. For starters, Pokemon seems to be continually moving in a direction that I hate. The huge overpowered basic EX Pokemon continue to be strong, while the regular and hollow rare Pokemon continue to be virtually unplayable. Of the regular non-plasma rares, I can't really find any that'll succeed in competitive play at all. Gallade is kind of cute in that he combos with Gardevoir, but it's impossible to get multiple Stage 2s out in the current format with the speed of EX attackers and catcher. Lucario has a cool revenge attack that maxes out at 210 damage, but at an extra energy cost to Shaman, chances are it won't replace Shaman EX as the key revenge attacker. Togekiss has a really interesting ability that could block out the menace of Pokemon Catcher, but limiting it to a Stage 2 Pokemon that only works when Togekiss is active makes it pretty much near useless. It's already been in the format and has seen no competitive play, but the shiny Charizard reprint is unique in that it has a misprint, putting a fighting energy into its attack cost. Poor Charizard. They made the exact same error with Blaine's Charizard a near decade ago, and it confused me to no end when I was a kid. There is a big new mechanic from this set, and that's Team Plasma Pokemon. While I think the idea is kind of cool, and the blue borders in the cards actually makes a really nice change of pace, they are, for the most part, a group of the same underpowered rare cards. They don't have close to the support of the format-dominating SP Pokémon of formats past, but their support includes the following. Colrus Machine and Plasma Energy. This combo reminds me a lot of the classic SP tool Energy Gain, except that you need twice as many cards in your deck to pull things off. By playing Colrus Machine, you can search your deck for a Plasma Energy, which on its own is nothing other than a single colorless energy, and attach it, essentially giving you an extra attachment per turn. While this combo itself won't break the energy acceleration of Electric, Blastoise, or maybe even Dark Patch, all three major energy engines running competitive decks right now, it at least gives Plasma Pokémon a chance to build up slightly faster. Also waiting is the new supporter, Team Plasma Grunt. By discarding a Team Plasma card, trainer or Pokémon, you can draw four cards. At face value, this is a great exchange, providing solid draw without having to dump your hand or shuffle all your cards back in. The only thing going against it will be viability and that's whether or not Plasma cards are realistically good enough to be available enough in your hand to discard. And last is Plasma Frigate, a stadium card which removes a Plasma Pokémon's weakness if they have a Plasma Energy attached. I don't really see this card being too viable. Not only are stadium cards rising in play currently, putting yours at risk of replacement, but you can only run four Plasma Energy in a deck, limiting your chances to even get the weakness removal. Of the Plasma Pokémon, a few of them look interesting, but not many will likely change the game. Plasma Magnezone is a cool ability that allows you to play two supporters in a single turn. This format has been lacking Pokémon that provide great consistency and draw, but I'm not sure Magnezone is going to change that. At a Stage 2, it takes a lot of deck space to get out consistently, and Magnemite gets knocked out by Landorus EX's single energy attack due to weakness. Plasma Rotom falls into a similar fate. For one energy, you can discard Lightning and then draw three cards, a great opening attack for Electric decks, which already like Lightning in the discard pile. However, once again, Fighting Weakness makes him an easy prize for Landorus. 
The big Plasma Pokemon players will be talking about, however, is Plasma Kling Kling. His ability, Plasma Steel, prevents all damage from EX Pokemon done to your Metal Pokemon. Now that is interesting, especially when you consider that just about every winning deck right now is run on some form of EX Pokemon for a majority of attackers, a big reason why Sigilyph has become such a great tech card. Decks can prepare for a non-EX attacker tech to counter a single Sigilyph, but an army of high HP Metal Pokemon? Possibly not. The only issue is the fact that Metal Pokemon simply aren't that strong right now. This set includes Kabalion EX as the first Metal EX Pokemon from the new sets, but with damage capped at 100, he isn't exactly a heavy hitter. Dealing damage and setting up quickly enough are going to be just a few of the issues a Kling Kling player would need to consider. Moving on to the other EX Pokemon are the three Plasma Legendary Birds. They make me so sad. I've been waiting for a special Legendary Bird card for a long time. They didn't get any level X cards, any primes, or any legends. Now back for the first time as a special card in nearly eight years, they just aren't very good. Even with Colbrus Acceleration, Xanthos and Moltres don't have a chance to do well in this format. Articuno is possible to be paired with Blastoise, but Keldeo deals so much more damage, and Keldeo's switching ability from opposing Blastoise decks makes the Plasma Energy Paralysis effect pretty much useless. Speaking of pairing with Blastoise though, the new Black Karim from this set has a huge potential from everyone's favorite turtle. For 3 water and a lightning, which could be provided through a tech to blend or prism energy, you deal a massive 200 damage, enough to KO every EX Pokemon, even with Eviolite. Discarding the energy isn't a total loss with energy retrieval, but ideally, he'd be used as a closer to grab those two final prizes off an EX Pokemon. You could even run Crystal Wall with him in order to boost your HP to the massive count of 300, but I doubt that alone would be worth replacing the single Ace Pack that you run in your deck. But Black Kyrim's poor brother, however, is just flat out unplayable as an EX Pokemon right now. The final Plasma EX, Lugia, has received a lot of talk, but I'm doubtful he'll receive much play. His ability, Overflow, gives you an extra prize for a knockout, making it so all you need to do is knock out two EX Pokemon to take all six of your prize cards. Whether or not this is viable, however, is to be determined. His 4 energy attack, Plasma Gale, requires that you discard a Plasma Energy, and you can only max out a 4 of those in your deck. While part of the attack's 4 energy cost can be aided by double colorless energy, you still need 3 separate attachments to attack. And after that, 120 damage doesn't knock out any major EX Pokemon without setting up damage somewhere else first. Altogether, that's a lot of variables I don't think you can depend on. And finally is Victini EX. Victini is interesting. For a single fire energy, a pretty uncommon type right now, you can attach two energy straight from your deck, an excellent setup if you can pull it off. He also gets his own ace spec in Victory Piece, which lets you attack with Victini EX for zero energy. However, his second attack only deals 100 damage to EX Pokemon and 50 to non-EX, and at a low 110 HP, that's an easy two prizes that you're more than likely going to be giving up at some point in the game. It's a nice upside as a starter, but you're going to need an amazing combo to offset the downsides. So there aren't too many Pokemon that'll shake this format up, but where the set really shines are in its trainers. Even outside of the Plasma specific options we've already talked about, there are some very good cards that will see a lot of play. The other supporter in the set, Colrus, has potential to change the way that players choose to play. At a format where draw supporters are very sparse, being able to shuffle your hand and draw for the amount of bench Pokemon in play is just insane. At its max, that's shuffling your hand in and drawing the unimaginable 10 cards. Playing the card puts you in a weird spot though. You'll want to have your bench full to draw a maximum amount of cards, but by playing a high bench count, you might help your opponent's own Colrus. Even if you get only 5 or 6 cards, this is still great draw, and players should be throwing multiple copies of this card into their deck as soon as the set becomes legal. All of the item cards in this set could see play in my opinion. Escape Rope, presenting a return of the beloved Warp Point, presents a unique twist on Switch, allowing you to switch out, but also forcing your opponent to throw up a new active Pokemon. While there will always be situations where Switch is optimal, keeping your opponent's active Pokemon where it's at, being able to disrupt your opponent's strategy by forcing them to switch out made the original Warp Point card playable in just about every format it has appeared in. Bicycle is interesting, allowing you to draw until you have four cards in your hand. This is a very low hand size, but combining this with cards that discard from your hand, such as Ultra Ball, you could create a quick engine for drawing cards without having to play a supporter. Aether is a very interesting card that provides energy acceleration for energy heavy decks. With it, you reveal the top card of your deck and get a free energy attachment if you reveal a basic energy. Combined with Pokedex, or even this set's Lunatone, 
you can stack your deck and get quick energy acceleration, which should work well with Landorus EX, the only major EX Pokemon with no form of energy acceleration for its type. But the big, ridiculous whammy is Hypnotoxic Laser, one of the best item cards printed in a long, long time. Right off the bat, this card does exactly what Plus Power did, add 10 damage to an attack. Except this time it's through Poison, giving you the chance for extra damage if the opponent remains in the active spot. On top of that, you have a one quarter chance that your opponent could remain asleep coming into their turn. And on top of that, the card pairs stupidly well with the set's other stadium, Verabank City Gym, which increases normal poison damage between turns to three instead of one. That's a ton of extra damage for just a few trainer cards, and it'll benefit the quick decks that can fit it. There are also a lot of combos you can pull off with this card alone, such as instant knockouts with Raticade's second attack, or comboing with Ninetales' attack with the special conditions, but for the most part, this card should see play as a huge damage booster for the quickest of decks. And finally are the Ace Specs. Dancing Machine is the Ace Spec replacement for Junk Arm, a card that defined our last few formats. While Dowsing Machine does have an advantage in that it can potentially give you an extra copy of a card, for example, allowing you to play five copies of Pokemon Catcher in a game, I still see it as inferior to Computer Search, which has almost universal use in any deck at just about any time. The last A spec, Scramble Switch, is a cool offensive weapon. It allows you to switch a benched Pokemon in and then transfer as many energy as you like from the previous active. I can see this card being huge for preserving energy, building up a surprise Mewtwo EX out of nowhere, or a number of other tricks. While it doesn't work in every deck, I can see Scramble Switch actually giving Computer Search and Gold Potion a run for their money as the only A spec card in your deck. Plasma Storm hits wide release on February 6th, and it's definitely a good one, if only for the massive amount of playable trainer cards. It won't eliminate the format's strong decks out there, and it might not add too many new ones, but it'll definitely change the way players build and adjust their trainer lines.